Hi, we're from group 2 and we chose to refute group 4's arguments. On their first point, they stated that the US women national team have surpassed their male counterparts in terms of ticket sales and jersey sales. But we have to realize that this is due to the fact that this team have won two consecutive World Cups, thus raising their stock and marketability. As for Serena Williams, the same could be said. From her sports prowess, she gains a portion of her income, but most of her endorsements are there because she creates value as an entertainer, the same as the US Women National Team. On the second point, US women had won more medals than their male counterparts in Rio and London Olympics. But if we look deeper into the we can see that U.S. had to dominate the Olympics, meaning that they had better infrastructure to support their athletic male and female. One that IOC has made plan to increase female participants by 50%. This means that the female side of Olympics generally face less competition than the male side. In your guys' points, you admitted that female athletes have lower biological conditions as compared to their male counterparts. By saying that women have less upper body mass and strength compared to males by 30%, you're analyzing it in a way that makes it seem that the men and women are playing or competing against each other in a sport. You say women have to work harder than men due to less muscles, but that is just untrue. They are playing with other women that puts them in a level playing field. They're not playing with men. You are just supporting our point that because of these differences in body structure, the competitive output of men and women's sports are just not the same, leading to the pay gap we have right now.